Jerry 501. I've got some issues here regarding the Santa Susana Field Laboratory Nuclear Center in um, Northridge, Simi Valley, California. It's up by LA. So first we're going to watch a little excerpt from the EPA meeting uh, December 12th, 2012. Gentlemen, I have a question, then I want to go to Dan in the back. Uh, Michael Collins, EnviroPorter.com. I have a question uh, for Andy. Uh, in this process, when did EPA realize, while you were spending or, or contracting folks uh, to do this $41.5 million study, when did you folks realize that you wouldn't be able to actually fulfill the objectives that the study was, which is to create a lookup table for background values. You were able to establish background values, but the report, which I've read, basically says you can't use those when we go to actually clean up. When during the process did EPA realize that because labs change, you actually couldn't fulfill the contract? Didn't you guys know this before you took the money? I think you're mixing a couple of different questions there. Um, actually, we did fulfill the objectives of our investigation. We, we fulfilled it. We ripped you off for $41.5 million. Our presentation is that, um, that um, we certainly um, um, learned from this process, and um, we've worked with the laboratories to uh, push them as hard as we possibly could. Um, um, and this is really pushing the boundaries of science. Um, to be able oh to yeah, pushing the boundaries of science. Moreover, then to take that measurement, and try to reproduce doing a that study using on the toxicity. Lab. One of our recommendations, so that they could clean the place up. Use one lab. We had problems with being able to get the results from the labs and be able to um, be able to, to um, turn that around and and, and um uh yeah uh uh. uh Oh boy, I'm on the spot here. Um, started, Let's see, how much more can I lie? Um, we needed to account for the differences between the labs, <coughs> and ultimately um, that was addressed. And we worked very closely with the state to um, to split the money with that, the state. That issue, and, it's, um, and we feel good about it. Okay, but you didn't know this before you went into the process. No, you we didn't. This is the first time that we've done this public investigation. So, I think, yeah. So it's you know it's really been a unique study. Um, super fun. We look at risk. This is a unique. We look at risk. We took a big role, risk with your money. We went and gambled the money, and we lost. We this out. Carl and the HDL folks, um, our lab folks. We had the great radio chemists that assisted us, and through that process, we've learned a lot. The lookup table recommendations that we provide to the state again are a cookbook that provide our lessons learned. They provide our recommendations. They do. They have the BTVs in them. They have worksheets in them. They say, look, you should be aware of this while you're doing this study. When you're doing the confirmation sampling, you need to be aware of these pitfalls. And um, you know, we think with that information, we'll be able to, uh, uh, to, to reproduce the investigation. I want to take a few more questions before we move into DTSC's part. Dan, you had a question? Dan Hirsch. No, I just wanted to explain something to everyone here. We, uh, I prefer if I'm going to ask Carlos's question. Excuse me, if you're a government agency and you've just misappropriated forty-one and a half million dollars, to say it can only be a question, is an effort to suppress uh, accountability. I don't understand. I mean, let me make my statement. Uh, we're not going to argue about it. Sure. Uh, okay. So people need to understand. They got forty-one and a half million dollars. We were supposed to come up with a table. What was background? And that was supposed to be the cleanup level. Everything they detected about background is supposed to be cleaned up. There was some intervention in the last few weeks, we're going to get to the bottom of who was involved in it, a completely reversed course. It ended up with EPA failing to do what it had promised to do. And that puts at risk the cleanup. And I'm not going to argue about it here. Everyone else is furious about it. We've all decided we weren't going to deal with it unless you said something that was clearly untrue, which you just did. So there will be an effort to try to have some kind of audit or investigation about what happened in the last few weeks. They did a marvelous study for three years. Now something happened at the last minute. And we're going to find out about it. Because now that they know where the contamination is, they're recommending that a lot of it not be cleaned up. But the fundamental 
The principle is the cleanup agreement, which is the cleanup the background, that the cleanup table is based on the background values they have, be ignored. I want to argue with you in this setting. You have another presentation by an agency that's also banning the agreements, uh, but people here should know that they got very close to doing what they promised to do, and something happened at the last minute. Okay. So back in envirorreporter.com, Boeing's meltdown mess. California's Department of Toxic Substances Control has come under fire from public health advocates Monday for allowing illegal demolition of radioactive buildings at the Santa Susana Field Laboratory and recycling the hot metal or dumping radiation in seven Southern California dumps. A letter signed by six groups gave DTSC and the State Department of Public Health 24 hours to comply. This comes in the wake of the first five parts of EnviroReporter.com's Boeing Meltdown Makeover, which exposed a concerted greenwashing and astroturfing campaign to sell the notion that the 2,850-acre property is already clean enough for a public park. Yes, a public park. They didn't even clean it up to what background, legal background limits were. And yet, they're ready to go forward so that you have a place to go walk your dog and take your children and expose them to horrific radionuclides. Also exposed in December 2012 were efforts by the Federal Environmental Protection Agency and DTSC to undermine a $41.5 million radiation study. Two months later in February came a blistering consumer watchdog report which showed the DTSC and its director Debbie Raphael to be heavily under the influence of the polluting companies they're supposed to regulate. The Santa Monica-based group spearheaded Monday's letter in the ultimatum which was signed by the Center on Race, Poverty and the Environment, Committee to Bridge the Gap, Physicians for Social Responsibility in Los Angeles, and the Southern California Federation of Scientists. The coalition says that the DTSC is quietly allowing Boeing to dismantle former nuclear structures in Area 4 of the lab without proper oversight, environmental review, and public input, which is all required by law. The group called for a halt to the tearing down of the former plutonium fuel fabrication facility, called now by the lab owner Boeing the Nuclear Materials Development Facility. These Department of Energy buildings are part of Area 4 of the lab where three partial nuclear meltdowns took place in 1959, 1964, and 1969. Area 4 is highly polluted with radiation. The coalition says the demolition of the old plutonium building could be torn down by next week with four more other nuclear facilities in the pipeline for demolition. This conduct violates numerous laws, including the California Environmental Quality Act, the Health and Safety Code provisions governing disposal of radioactive materials, and an executive order prohibiting the disposal of waste from decommissioned facilities in municipal landfills. Consumer Watchdog released a map showing where this radioactive debris has been shipped from six structures of destruction. They include hazardous waste landfills and municipal dumps, all of which are not licensed to accept radioactive material. The sites are in Buttonwillow, McKittrick in the southern Central Valley of California to Ventura, Simi Valley, Lancaster, Sun Valley, and Azusa. Buttonwillow is the destination for the debris left when the plutonium building is picked over for recyclable metal. 
The very idea that radioactive waste could end up in the zippers of consumers' jeans or in the steel girders of our office buildings is shocking. The state is doing the opposite of protecting the people. It's helping to expose the public to radioactive contamination. It's inconceivable. Plutonium-239 is by far the most dangerous radioisotope and one of the most toxic substances known. That's according to Dr. Robert Dodge, board member of the Physicians for Social Responsibility Los Angeles. Once it circulates and deposits throughout the body, it exposes the blood, kidneys, liver, and spleen to its cancer-causing alpha particles. That this metal could end up recycled is an issue. Enviroreporter.com first reported in December 27, 2001. This is how far this goes back. The deliberate recycling of radioactive waste into the consumer product stream is happening again. Uh, let's see. Boeing has recently begun tearing down buildings and other contaminated structures from the nuclear area and disposing of the waste not in licensed low-level radioactive waste disposal facilities, but in municipal and hazardous waste landfills not licensed or designed for radioactive waste. With Boeing Meltdown makeover getting a little messier, the residents of Button Willow now have to consider the dumping of plutonium, one of the most toxic poisons on the planet, into its controversial dump. So lethal is this radionuclide with a half-life of 24,100 years that it takes but a few millionths of an ounce being inhaled that will produce with 100% certainty lung cancer. And this is my message. This is my message to Boeing. <laughs>